This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. Featuring retired FBI Special Agent Jennifer Coffindaffer. Chad J. Bell's attorney, John Pryor, saying, can I stop doing this? <laughs> because I don't like working for free. <laughs> You can't blame him. I mean, you look at the Daybell case, this is not in any way one that is really defensible, but that's what he's charged with doing. That's what he's been trying to do for the last almost two to three years as Chad Daybell's attorney. But now we are three months out from the Chad Daybell murder trial, a capital trial where he could very well face the death penalty. But he's saying, look, I'm not being paid for this anymore. He has no money. It's time to get some public defenders in here that are qualified for a capital murder case. I am not. Can we do that? The judge uh, is set to uh, make a decision on that. What's your thoughts on this, Jennifer Coffendaffer, retired FBI special agent, that we're, we're literally three months out from the trial. He, he already knew that at some point here that he wasn't going to be able to get paid from Chad Daybell. At, at some point, but why now? Why, why, is it, why is now the moment to walk away from Chad Daybell? Well... Whenever you're approaching trial, and when I say approaching, when it is really imminent, weeks away, I know this is three months away, but it's a short amount of time to prepare a case for trial. There's a reason why they call it mm -hmm. trials of your life. It's the worst time. I mean, you're just spending hours and hours preparing, getting the documents, doing your order of proof, revisiting with witnesses. It's a nightmare to go through a trial. And he knows he's going to be spending this kind of time. And he knows there's no money left in the coffer. So mm -hmm. he's checking out. I'm not at all surprised. The only person left holding the bag really is Chad Daybell. And apparently he doesn't have the ability to convince his attorneys as Alec Murdoch does. Because Alec Murdoch's attorneys are working a lot of hours, too. Yeah. And... You know, I don't know where that money's coming well, from, but <laughs> there's a lot of missing money with Alec Murdoch. And I'm wondering where could it have gone? I don't know. Are you know. you're staying in a in what their... twenty thousand dollar a week house with butlers? <laughs> I wonder how that got paid for. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I think he anticipated, you know, just I know we're on Chad, but just digressing yeah. a bit. I mean I think he had that all squirreled back, and yeah. I think these attorneys are getting paid. I agree. But nevertheless, whether they are or are just seeking the fame sure. of it, it all. I get it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I yeah. get John Pryor, you know, saying I'm not going to get paid. This would require working basically 24-7 for the next three months. Yeah, without a doubt. You also knew that's what was this, what this was the job. You also knew that is what is this is going to entail. You know, at some point, he's not going to be able to pay for this. But you've been here. Why not? Why didn't you withdraw a year ago, a month ago, if you weren't able to take this all the way up to trial? Because you're now oh. saying, okay, good luck. Here, get some public defenders. Or is this part of the strategy? Is this part of the strategy of, look, I'm going to stay representing you all the way up to like three months out, then I'm going to drop, hopefully. And then that will also push your trial out further because, yeah, the new counsel is certainly going to need more than three months. Well, in watching his presentation in court, he seemed very convincing to me that there's no money left and he wants off. And he, I mean, his biggest point was judge, I can't be ready. Mm -hmm. And of course the judge was irritated. Yeah. He said, you've had all this time to get ready. How well, come yeah. you're not ready? What, why and, exactly? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the judge made your point to a T you knew this was coming. This yeah. isn't some shocker and yet you're not ready. And he said, well, I don't feel comfortable. And I think the judge ultimately said, well, I'm not going to force you to do something if you're not comfortable and if you're not prepared, because, of course, he's so worried about this hitting him on appeal, the yeah. judge, meaning that this case could be appealed. So, you know, those public defenders are likely going to be, you know, will be appointed and are in the process of being appointed, as far as I recall. Mm -hmm. And he's going to get new and he, you know. It's going to get pushed out again, because how can you put two new attorneys on a death penalty case and give them three months? You can't. So, Chad Daybell, uh, we'll see you in about a year. Yeah, I, I agree. I, this is not going to happen. I think Lori will probably get to her trial now again prior to, to this one. But then we go back to how do you defend Chad Daybell? I mean, we look at Lori's trial. 
There really wasn't much of any defense that was put up there. I mean, I would imagine this has got to be one where if you're the attorney and if you're going to be the one that gets assigned to this as a public defender, that's got to be a nightmare. You got to be going, yeah, how, I mean, how do you go out there and defend this? It's, it is a nightmare. And all they're going to do, in my opinion, is push the blame on Lori. Uh, They're going to do everything in their power to, you know, I think, try to portray somebody who is so manipulative and manipulated Chad. Mm -hmm. And, but, you know, it just perplexes me why these people, when they're in the corner, it's a checkmate moment that they don't say, let me just plead guilty. And somehow, you know, their child, they don't ever hear their children's voices. Well, you're right. You know, some do, some have the ability to do that and some don't. And I think it, number one, if you have the ability to essentially murder anyone, more or less, I know these weren't Chad's children, but they were Lori's children, right. but they're children. And, and you, some, if allegedly he was part of this and he literally melted one of them in a bucket, it's, I guess you have the ability to do almost anything and say almost anything. If that's in your wheelhouse, I would think almost anything is in your wheelhouse. Well, and you just answered the question. That's right. You know, there's no empathy. It's all selfish. It's all self-serving. And so you can't listen to the children's voices even now. And he'll keep fighting, I think, unfortunately. And he's probably not listening at all to his attorneys. And he knew the day was coming when his money was going to run out. And it has come. I'm surprised he hasn't tried to set up some sort of barter deal with John Pryor of like, hey, you know what? When I take over the world as, you know, the prophet or God or whatever in Rexburg, you yourself are going to get a nice suite at the Holiday Inn. Could like do a trade, do a barter or something at, for apocalypse <laughs> times, because I'm imagining Chad may still be living there. Who really knows? Well, how about this? How about the GoFundMes? I mean, I'm seeing GoFundMes for the most horrific people that have committed the most horrific crimes, yeah. and yet they get tens of thousands of dollars donated, and people fall in love with them in prison. I'm surprised we're not seeing it. And, and you know what? I didn't look it up before I spoke. So <laughs> you I just gave somebody an idea. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh yes. So yeah, yeah. That's probably out there. If not, it will be by the next time we talk. <laughs> That's right. All right. Let's go and uh, talk about Richard Allen for a moment. Uh, We'll talk more about the prison, the treatment, and the thing to move him since the other hearings. This will air after that hearing. Sick of the ads? We opt to. Start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.